Hello everyone. So in this video, what we are going to discuss is basically 10 techniques by which you can increase your chances of getting a job in water, hydraulics, environmental and sewerage sectors and other similar sectors. Now this is a very interesting topic although it is very less discussed. So in this video we are not going to give you a lecture on uh, how much CGPA you should have or how many numbers of experienced you are. Rather it is a very general perspective of things which we generally don't give an attention to. Okay. So without wasting much time let's move on. So this is an overall outlook of the things with that we are going to cover. Now the first eight points that is from direct application to the basics of GIS we are going to cover in this video. The last two points and these two points are the most important one that is LinkedIn and psychology we are going to cover in a separate video because that video is a bit longer. So let's start. The first thing is direct application. So what do we mean by saying direct applications? So if you are a fresher, you have just passed your college and looking for a job or you are experienced person and you don't have a job currently and if you are a person with a job and looking for a job switch, what you can do is you can get yourself registered on the portals of reputed companies such as Atkins, Walter P. Murray, Stantec. You simply go to their website and log in and uh, select whether you are graduate or postgraduate and apply your CV. What will happen is whenever there is a vacancy you will get notified by a email or if there is a vacancy which matches your profile they will contact you directly. So this will increase your chances of getting recruited and it costs you nothing. So you can do this thing to increase your chances. Moving on to the next point. This is the HR details. Now currently we might be knowing that the job statistics in India especially in our sector water and wastewater is very less. But this situation is going to improve. Why? Let's look at the statistics. According to the Jal Jeevan mission each and every household of India needs to be supplied with tapped water collection and uh, sewer collection, collection facilities. So imagine how many uh, houses near your area has this facility. If it is there in your area, imagine whether it is there in your village or not. So a lot of opportunities are going to come although the pace currently is very low. So what you need to do is you keep yourself equipped with the opportunities that are coming ahead. Now why we are saying all these things is because when there will be a lot of projects so a lot of new players will be coming into the field. So new players are those players which are already working in some fields for example construction, highways, bridges etc. And they will also start coming into the water sector because they already have some experience but since there are less projects they are, uh, they are currently dormant. So you can get a list of all those companies and their HRs and you can send your CV make a connection with the HR and you can also connect with those people on uh, LinkedIn and increase your chances. So we will be giving you a list of nearly 50 companies which uh, might work in the water sector. So this is how the list will look like. So in case you want to get that uh, you have to wait for the second video because we will be giving all the details in the description of that second video. Now the third point is learning codal provisions. So in case you are getting selected uh, for a company and uh, got a chance to get interviewed. Experienced people might be knowing what all things to answer but for, for freshers the problem is they have the entire syllabus in their mind but they don't know what actually is needed. So as per our experience what we can tell is the codal provisions of central public health and environmental engineering organization is very important. Therefore you should be knowing all the important provisions from the perspective of a water supply and wastewater engineering. Now when you look at their website or if you have the code you can look at have a look at the code. The book is very thick and everything does not needs to be learned and memorized because there is a that is a manual based on complete package of water supply that includes the work of a civil engineer, a water resource engineer, an electrical engineer, a process engineer and so on. Therefore you need to know what all things are from your perspective and need to know that. So we will be working on, we are currently working on sorting all those things which are important for you and we will give you as a list very soon. 
Now the most important part that comes in this video is the softwares that needs to be learned. So regardless of me telling you, you all might be knowing that water gems and sewer gems needs to be learned. There is no other option. And uh, we have already started a series on uh, such softwares and we are going to start more very soon. So you can just get subscribed to the channel and watch videos frequently. The next part is theoretical revision. Now this is again applicable for freshers uh, because you might be knowing a lot of syllabus but the things which are actually going to matter is you know, the BTEC syllabus of environmental engineering. Okay. So this includes both, both uh, the wastewater engineering and the water supply engineering. Now you can again leave those things uh, such as design of WTP and STP because this is the part of process engineer. You need to focus more on hydraulics engineering and again you need to know some few things from the fluid mechanics also. So we will give you a list of topics that you need to learn uh, so that you can focus better on those things. Again, uh, I'm not saying that other things are not important, but these things you cannot leave. Okay, so just wait for uh, the second video and you can check the description of that video and get all the required details. The next point is perfect CV. So you all know how to make a CV and uh, I will just provide you few things which you should do. Again, you can ignore this advice, but uh, if you seem uh, if you see some logic behind it, some rational in the, what I am saying, you can apply this. Now there can be two kinds of C CVs. First is a CV for an interview and the second is a CV for an application. What is the difference between uh, both the CVs? Suppose you are applying for an interview. You got a chance to get an interview and you have to give your CV to the person who is interviewing you. Now the person who is interviewing you, he might give a very good glance at your CV and he might read many things about you. Okay. So now you need to put everything in detail and you need to make things very clear. The second thing is if you're applying for an application, like if you saw a vacancy on LinkedIn and you want to submit it CV. So now you, you might be knowing that for one vacancy, we are having hundreds of applications. Okay. Now anybody who is recruiting somebody do, does not have time to sort those many applications. So what they do is that they look for keywords. For example, if a company is looking for a civil engineer with a master's in environmental engineering and with an experience of four to 12 years in the experience of water and wastewater industry. So you need to highlight the experience on the top of your CV. Again, your degree should be visible because this is the how companies will sort. They will not see whether you have won a first prize in singing competition in your school or not. No. So these all are the important things which are given in a vacancy and you, you should highlight them accordingly. Again, this is a very important thing that I'm going to say now that you should not submit a same CV for every vacancy. Every vacancy is different and your CVs need to be modified accordingly. For example, in this uh, vacancy, they are not asking you about whether you know water gems or sewer gems. They are asking you whether you know Microsoft Outlook whether you know Word, Excel and uh, AutoCAD. So you should try to make your CV accordingly. So that will increase your chances of getting the job. Now the next point is AutoCAD and Google Earth. This is also very important because when you are working uh, with water gems or sewer gems or any designing software, you need to get the help of AutoCAD. Again, there are people called as draftsmen in the companies who will make the drawings for you, but they will give you drawings and you will not know how to operate on them because drawings generally don't come in hard copies right now. They will send the drawings by email and that will be maybe in the format of DWG or DXF. So you might be able to handle those things because these files are required as a background in the water gems and sewer gems. Therefore you should have a basic idea about what are the different file types, how to operate them, how to change them from one form to another. Okay. Similarly, Google Earth. Google Earth is the most important part if you are going for a field visit or site visit because all the data that you are going to collect is ultimately going to be viewed in Google Earth because a lot of members from your team will not be going to the site visit. So they will be analyzing the site based on the satellite images received by Google Earth. So you should be knowing how to calculate the area, how to calculate the distance, how to locate a point, how to pick, put pictures on uh, Google Earth the, from at the places where you are going to visit. 
so you need to learn all those things and uh, again if you want to know these things if you feel this is important please let us know so that we can make a separate video on that okay uh, and as i said autocad the various file formats the modification that are required and how to convert all those files in google earth again there are various file formats for example kmz and kml so you need to know what are them and how can you convert it from an autocad to a google earth file and again vice versa so to uh, support the conversion a software called global mapper is used now global mapper is again a very vast software and you need to have a basic idea of that also the next thing is basics of gis without gis now you cannot survive in this industry you should have a basic idea of what is gis how to create operate and modify a shape file now uh, you can operate on any of the softwares arcgis or qgis it's better if you are versed with uh, qgis because many companies don't want to pay for arcgis and thus using qgis so if you have a qgis knowledge you can do th those things you should also have a pro um, projection system knowledge because many of the times we collect the data from the site and that is in a different projection system or what happens is when you convert some file formats na, the projection system changes so you should you should need to know that in which projection system which we are working now this is a, a bit complex topic but you can learn it from youtube again if you want us to make a video on this please let us know then field data collection now field data collection uh, what do you mean by field data collection suppose you are designing a water supply and a sewerage system for a city so before doing that you need to collect the data from field what all data we collect that is how many pipelines are already existing how many houses are going uh, getting demand how many osts overhead tanks are there in the cities what is the general elevation of the city at various points that is the road level invert level so many things you need to collect now many of the things which we uh, will be outsourced to some surveying company but some of the things you need to do it from yourself now there are various softwares uh, which you can install in your android or ios which will collect the data automatically for you okay so you need to have a knowledge of all those softwares because if you know all those things na, then when you go in a company that makes you look uh, very advanced because 90% of the people don't know such things okay so you can have a look uh, at as at softwares like sw maps at etc you can also uh, look at softwares which calculates the length the projection suppose there is a oht of 20 meters height now you cannot take a tape and uh, measure it but by projection of the image you can calculate it from your android phone so you need to uh, explore various softwares uh, which are already available on android and which makes your work very easy okay so that's all for this video the part 2 of this video is more interesting and is still pending so you can subscribe us if you like this video and uh, share it with your friends thanks for watching and have a very nice day